These, what is interesting, I want to put in some of these because this was the way I could ask questions about the nature of time and the nature of time travel and the nature of nonlinear mind. I was very influenced by quantum physics and physics and very fascinated with non-local, non-linear, because it was, I felt that that was really the signs that the brain itself was starting to go, I can deal with these other implications now. And that's why a lot of the ways that, and, and this is why to a great degree I feel a lot of this is going back to a different type of science, which is saying that, that the science of all ancient knowing was based upon stepping into the mystery and allowing the mystery to mentor you uh, due to true relationship rather than stepping in with defining things. And this is why we'll see the relationship to the organic, uh, the neurological, and, uh, and as you say, the drawings befuddle me because they, they just have a, you know. Could you go back to that one? Yeah. And are those simple? And those black and whites, are those, or are some of the other ones, it's like, it looks like they're just filled with symbols. Are they symbols or are yeah. they? They're, they're symbols, but again, uh, this is something that I, I want us to really think about. Like, do you know with dancing, where the body knows, it, it feels? The same thing with cooking, where you, your tongue's saying, mm, it's a, it's something, and you know it. It's not, it's not intellectual. It's much more about... That that's the same thing with these symbols. I started to understand that if I, if I looked at them intellectually, I'd be trying to figure out Tibetan and this. But what moved me was the sense of lyricism, the sense of, so I wasn't, it's almost like an actor mimicking. I wasn't interested in trying to be correct. I was much more interested in, in the, the, how does this feel? How does it feel in the body? What I find very interesting, and I think this is very much uh, gets at the proof of what's being said, is that, that what does happen is by trusting this other way, it becomes more and more now that you're trusting, you can realize that, yes, of course, think about the ego. If we go underneath the ego's perception, where are we? The collective unconscious. Why wouldn't it be that we would know Arabic and, and, and you know, um, Farsi and all these other languages simply by dropping our gaze? It's interesting because when Stanislaus and I uh, will uh, look at Latin, he, he knows Latin, but uh, for me, Latin moves upon me. And it's amazing to me when I sort of go soft focus how much of it's there. But when I go hard focus, I think I don't know. And it stops. And that's why a lot of this is really about developing an etiquette or a relationship that says take the journey uh, and don't use it as a way of proving something because you can't prove. This was, you know, and, and this again I think is about the traveling of, of consciousness with ink and brush, you know, to see if we're going to, we don't have time to get to Alpha Centauri, but who knows? Using pattern recognition, maybe as we spill ink, as we look, that that's how we travel this place. We do it imaginatively rather than literally. We don't have time to go someplace that's 100 million light years away. We will be dead. <laughs> so the question, if that's the given, then how do we actually engage that. And that's where the imagination comes in. It says, if you give me an analogy, if you give me a point of alignment, then I can work with you and through you. And as you take this adventure, you will go deeper and deeper. And, and this, as we can see, these are the languages and this, this going deeper and deeper into the realms that, that um, are beyond me at this point. Um, and that's why I do. I feel like a lot of this, and I've had people translated. I've had, you know, my Egyptian friend ask me when I'm going to admit I'm an Arab, and I've been told my Arabic has perfect phrasing, so who to thunk? Um, but this, this um, you know, so these are just different images from these, uh, these, these books. And this is where we will see the advent again of the watchers, the elongated figure, and this, this uh, journey of entity that is over and over in this story saying that our energies have been abstracted. We think we live in an objective energetic state, but that what this is getting at is that everything is sentient energy, meaning everything is composed of life. And as we understand that organic model, we're able to mediate these different uh, worlds because, uh, again, we're following its natural contours. And these are just a lot of, again, different uh, visions. And this... Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And, and, and I think that that's key now. It's like enough figure. You think about a relationship, enough figuring me out. Find me beautiful again. 
love me for God's sake. I'm much more interesting when I'm loved than when I'm analyzed. You know, and think of our doing that to our own psyches. Our psyches are going, really? You're going to analyze me again? What's wrong with me today? It's boring. I mean, that's why the aliens don't stop here. We're so freaking dull. <laughs> they show up when you're about something. They go, now you're getting interesting. And that's why, you know, so I uh, went after them with brush and pen. But, um, and we'll see here. And this, of course, is going to simplicity. And those who know Flying Lotus, he used this uh, from the Codex for his album. Uh, and, and this has become iconic. But what's very interesting from the Mayan perspective, because I didn't mean it, that there are 13, like the 13 backed and 13 dots leading to the awakening of the new sun. So I like that. And we'll see. And these I just want to sh give examples of how oftentimes we have different things rolling around in our heads that we can't really see. Like I didn't see these but I'd feel them. So I started allowing them to be written down, see where they took me. And every time I did, I started to realize that they were actually taking me into different realms, different worlds, different possibilities. Uh, and the thing I like about the maturity here, there wasn't a way to read this as much as every time we would enter it, it would start to awaken uh, uniquely with a unique uh, story. And that's why we have this and the story of energy. And Ode to Joy, I love this one. Yeah, that, I don't even know how I painted that. That's just, I mean, I look at some of these things and I think, it's like really like with acting where you walk off stage going, God, that was good. Oh my God, what did I do? You know, it was Olivier, there was a famous story that he was weeping after a performance and said, what's wrong? And he goes, I have no idea what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was brilliant. <laughs> and, that's the, and this is, again, looking into the Maya, but looking into it as asking really from a creative lens rather than trying to prove something just to see where this would take. And this is moving into the, uni that every atom is a, is a universe in miniature into the body. It's interesting because this, I was listening to a, a, a program on the uh, Weechel Indians. <laughs> that's, that's how my brain took it. Um, and this sense of going down into the organism, the bioorganic, the sense of the interconnected universes deep within us. And I feel like that's why. And this, this uh, when I was working on it, it, I was told that this has to do with time travel. And in case any of you want the key to time travel, it's, it's Bipolar inverse triangularity. Don't have a clue as to what that is, but I'm sure it's very important. Um, <laughs> and, and so these are more of the, the story of, of really looking into these ancient texts. And I feel that these ancient texts now are saying that you know enough, see where they take you, because I'm looking for conversation. I'm not looking uh, for footnotes. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And more of the. And all of these languages, I, I say that they felt right in the same way that en energy feels right, the dance feels right. And then, of course, you need the legend to translate for people what they're looking at. And I thought, why give anything away? <laughs> we have the relationship, again, of turning these pages. And this is really kind of bringing it full circle. But this, this was an interesting point, because this, a, a lot of the questions was, I was interested in the nature of music beyond notes. And so I started to move into this question, and I was looking at sand on the beach. You know how waves come up, and they, they create those wonderful patterns? And that idea of the inherent musicality and rhythmic nature of, of of creation. I have no idea what that is, but I think it's very really cool. Um, <laughs> we all like jellyfish, too. There's something, there's some strange overlay with jellyfish and, yeah, exactly. And this, and then um, looking into the dark. And these, of course, the illuminated pages, which. And this I see as the present moment. So, yeah, it's something about that, that everything awakens. And then Negredo going back to the state of, of the, the darkness and the ground and the mystery of the watchers. 
This was uh, the, the painting at the top of the stairs. And everything we will see with the watchers is, uh, the watchers have in tradition the relationship. They're not just, because they started to appear in this work. One of the most interesting things is that the watchers in tradition are very ancient and they connect us to all of these other stories about who and what we are. That the Egyptians said that they came from the land of the watchers. The Egyptians called them the Urshu or the intermediaries between worlds. And I was interested in, in that, that borderland between malevolent and benevolent, meaning what is it that if we project our energies that uh, will become either malevolent or benevolent. And that's why we start to see here the watchers have been appearing. Even here, do you see how the, the rays are made from being, from the watchers? And that's why I think that a lot of this and why the watcher figure is so important is that it's really starting to say that we are woven of this scintillating weave of consciousness. This is why Quan Yin, the first entity to appear, we see that she's woven of the repetition of this entity over and over again, saying that all is necessary to the weave of the whole, all is whole and holy, all is sentient, all is life. And that became the thing. And this is why, just in terms of the language, I wanted to just show you a few examples of how it turned into music. But it also started teaching me about the idea of entity. Do you know, we're so used to abstract energy, but when you start doing an entity over and over again, and all shapes become circumscribed by the repetition of entity, it's very interesting because it, it, it takes the atomic structure from being objective energy into being sentient consciousness. And, and that's why I'm really interested in terms of our own studies in coming times. If we find ways of repeating living principles, will that develop different uh, storylines? And this is looking at the, the weave. And of course, that led to music. Um, uh, There's a little jazz, a little watcher jazz. And I know, the, I, I know the musicians out there could play this. They could, they could riff on this. And uh, of course, you always have to go back into the into the center node. <laughs> and there, and then we find the watchers creating her face, and then we go to the hieroglyph of the human soul, Thoth, the, and we see this Christ face. And you see how this is woven again of the repetition of watchers, of entity. And I think that this really tells us a lot about whether it's, it's you know, it's this whole idea of, of Christ, of Quetzalcoatl, of, of Pahana, the return of these energies, and why Rudolf Steiner and the rest were getting at that, that in ancient times, in the winter seed, it was a person, it was a being. But that, that seed was planted so that our being would carry in each of us a unique story of this constellation. And in this, we will see the blind eye and the open eye, the ways and knowledge of the law and the ways and knowledge of love. And that this becomes the great human question. And why this becomes so important in the weave is it's showing us that everything we think of as a being is actually the weave of being. And that's for us to take, you know, in a sense, inward, that we are this living weave, that these greater questions need each of us uniquely because we form part of the very structure of this sense of who and what we are. And this, of course, is Eve. And I'm not going to go too much because I've talked about these different <coughs> qualities. But I wanted to bring in uh, Eve and there she comes. Okay. Okay. And, and the knowledge of the apple and the chalice. Because this story of the apple will reoccur upstairs. And I think it's very important for 12, 12, 12, the Maya. Because what the Maya would say, what we've forgotten in our culture is art, creation. We think we're going to figure out the Mayan dilemma with numbers and bottom lines. So what do we think it's going to be? The end of the world. That's a really uninteresting thought form. I mean, that's really where you think that's the best you can come up with? This is the point where we all die? I mean, I have to be really, I just find it astounding at this point, and that's what she's saying is, listen, the apple is the truth that you are given the gift of life. You are uniquely whole and holy, and the gift of Eve, of the apple, is your unique artistry of human consciousness. 
This came because both male and female are umbilically connected to this great question of who are we then? And if we realize the ennobling element of our human question is that it couldn't be asked in one time or with one person, but had to be asked across all time through all persons, then we begin to honor that in both male and female form, we've been on this great journey, which then we see in the mothership, because this is the relationship we see outside. But we will also see what this painting starts to show us, is that all of these different sets of relationships are inherent. You can even look at this now as the kachina, the great, in, you know, the, the kachinas of the, uh, the Indians where you have the gods, you can see that. And I'm interested in this idea that the kachina, this seated being, is showing us this story of the arc of the ancients and this journey of the apple, the journey of unique creation.